All right, on today's episode of Detour, we have another dear friend of mine, Nikki, who is the founder and CEO of The Mag Park. It is a Los Angeles-based reseller of sneakers and other hype products like Supreme and hard-to-find uh, brands. And we're really discussing about the future of reselling. So if you follow this market, you know that StockX, GOAT, Stadium Goods, who just got acquired by Farfetch, is, this is a very hot space. And I'm trying to understand what the future of this industry looks like. Are we going to evolve from selling, uh, seeing sneakers and clothing to other items? Is this the bubble that's about to burst in reselling? Or this is just the beginning of the reselling business? This is a man that's in the trenches of this industry. Um, been around it for the last couple of years. I am around it through friends and different projects I'm involved with so I have a perspective so it's really nice to hear someone that's uh, really living it and dealing with kind of the challenges of the industry constantly changing so I think it's an interesting conversation whether you're into this type of product or not just to see how our industry is evolving so quickly and what does the future of retailing look like for footwear stay tuned all right so we're sitting here at the mag park in Burbank and I want to talk to you about the reselling industry yeah. We talk about it extensively in group chat. I'm constantly talking about it with everybody. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> I mean, all of a sudden, all this big money just came into it. Yep. There's now three major players, StockX, Goat, and Stadium Goods, because right. they have Farfetch's kind of uh, account base. Right. Where is it going? Like, how do you, how, what do you think is going to, what are we going to see now? I think this is just solidifying the business as a whole, right? Like now the big money's getting involved and some of these companies eventually are going to go public and do whatever moves they got to do to scale. Um, I think, you know, for myself, I, I guess I can speak for a little stronger and confidently is because, you know, we're seeing it, we're not even close to that level, but it excites me and excites, I think, other business owners because what these other big companies are doing is really they're overpaying for the swag, right? Like yeah. the coolness and because they don't, the, this business isn't like margin heavy. It's a very big volume game and it's really the bait to the bigger margin products and items. And I think people just want to get involved with that. And it's not a product you really have to market to sell. It sells itself. But if you market the brand, and the brand loyalty. I think that's what everybody's really trying to like corner at the moment. So don't you think, so in December, um, there was all this press that Adidas made more Yeezys than ever on, yeah. on that, whatever, was it was the white pair? The cream, yeah. Cream, right? I think it was and a million pairs. Million pairs. Don't you think that their strategy is, let's just make more, let it make it accessible to everybody right. and drown out the resellers? Because that's how I looked at it. So yeah. how do you survive in that market? I think, I mean, we capitalized on that because it was the cheapest way to get a Yeezy, right? Before we were paying three, four, five, six hundred dollars a pair yeah. prior to release. Now we can just, you know, buy shoes at 200 bucks and we may sell it for 300, but, you know, we're still getting 100%, I mean, 50% ROI on our money um, if we're able to capitalize on that. Now, competing with StockX and all these other um, apps or marketplaces that are really just, focused on the user data and just gross sales. Yeah, it's difficult, but as long as you, you can hold your position and your cash rich enough to have the flow to be in that position, I think we're all okay. And you don't think that uh, the sneaker companies dislike resellers because they're not capturing that margin? Why wouldn't, I just don't understand why they would want you guys to survive if I'm Nike or Adidas. I think it's just hard to make us go away because we're going to capitalize on anything that's hyped, right? Yeah. The hype is just not available. And I, there's always going to be products like that. Regardless of the big releases, there's still the Art Basel exclusive. There's still the All-Star exclusive. And those things, I don't see them going away. Sure, they can make more, but we just... That's the beauty of the resale business and why I love my business is because our ability to pivot isn't on a six month calendar. It's on a weekly calendar. So each weekend there's a different hot item and we just move what we're buying it at versus, you know, what we're going to you know, We're not stuck on a price to buy it. At. So then does that mean you see this business evolving like it's sneakers and apparel today? Is it? furniture tomorrow is it <laughs> clocks or what i mean like what is it like i just i'm just curious because you're obviously a good friend of mine and i look at these 
I look at what StockX and Goat and all these people are doing, and I'm thinking, like, how does Mickey survive in this market, yeah. right? And just, like, how do you evolve or do you evolve? Because I, I understand the brand is important, yeah. but, like, is it the product evolution? Like, what is it? I mean, brand loyalty is, is probably priority number one for us and the experience and just being able to have that um, person come in here, want to buy something and get to try it on or even run on the court mm -hmm. um, in our case. But really, we do shift in every category. Um, we've sold chairs online. We sold s sleds like the the as far as like the categories of what we can sell. Yeah. If it's not attainable easily, we will for sure be able to to sell it. So you think you think that it will evolve in terms of your categories and product? If you're an 18 year old person today and you want to get into the resale game, how do you do it? What would you do if you were starting from scratch today? I would take an inventory of what I have currently and consider that my initial investment. Um, I'm sure if I'm in trying to get into the resale game, I've had some consumer experience. Yeah. And so I would just really take a Excel sheet, put the item, how much I bought it for, what is it worth now in its, in its current state, and then just see what I can liquidate that to, to have some sort of cash flow, and then just go piece but, by piece. But what's the opportunity in your eyes? Like if someone says, I'm rich, I want to get in the resale game, what would you go buy today? A hundred pairs of something. And it, it would have to be a, a current release, and I would, you know, obviously your goal is to the closest to retail. And the reality is, in the resale game, once you hit, you know, once or twice on retail, there's a good amount of times. That's a ten times, five times investment that you can turn in a day. Really? Yeah. I mean, even through the apps or through, you know, a consignment program that we offer. Uh, after you take the fees, you can still convert. Um, an off-white um, Converse was once retailing for 160 bucks. We now sell that shoe for $1,200 a couple months after its release. Wow. So it's about what's hot right now. That's yeah. where the money is. It's always, in the resale game, it's always about what's hot in that week. And if you are cash rich, people can afford to just be able to sit on it so that it can rise in value. Because as basically what happens is, everybody wears the hot shit the week of or early because they want to look cool. And so those pairs start to become even more rare because there's, there isn't brand new pairs around. And so as that happens, as time go, times go by, um, you'll see the shoes go up in price. And do you think this is a bubble or is this the future? To me, because I'm in it, I have to believe it's the future. Obviously, I'm going to be smart about my decision and how I, I maneuver with the business. And maybe I'm not married to sneakers the way I was when I first opened the business because I was definitely full on like we're a footwear store and this is what it is. And then here comes the Supreme hype and it takes off. And now Supreme is even scaling to levels where uh, you can walk in. I mean, they had a, a, a sale on, at their Fairfax store, 30, 40 percent off on items. That hasn't happened in who knows how long. Yeah. But it's definitely a sign of how much shit they're making yeah. and what's to come. You so know? you think Supreme's a bubble? I don't think they've hit their bubble, but it's getting really The fact big. that they're discounting. The fact that they're discounting is unheard of. And the reality is, on release days, you'll see on... Um, stock eggs, how things are under retail. Like kids are literally going in there to buy whatever they want to buy, has the biggest return, and then just offing everything else. Before, you'd want to get every single item because every single item had a certain level of value. And so now that kind of changes. But for us, the way I look at it is, yeah, that may hurt the selling price, but we're not the one directly buying it from the, from the vendor. We're the ones buying it through the middleman. So really, we start to adjust our buying prices, and it actually benefits us because we, could, we can move more at a lower price versus being high-priced and you know selling for a higher margin. Got it. And do you think, what happens to people like Butt Locker, Finish Line, all your mall retailers today, Chic Shoes, all these people, because when I look at their stores, so I, I'll go shopping every once yep. in a while, not to buy product, just to go look. Right. Nobody wants inline product. Inline product is trash from all the brands. You only want hype stuff on your feet. No one walks in and goes, man, I love that regular ass pair of Air Maxes. <laughs> right? Is that true? So how do you, how do you, how do you kind of, what do you, what, what, if you ran Foot Locker today, what would you do?
If I ran for, I mean, I think they did the right move. I think everybody's struggling in those areas. I used to, I told this to a friend recently was, I used to go to the mall and you were committed to going to Foot Locker. Like yeah. that's where you were going and you were going to see what they had and what's hot. And now I don't really care to check for that. I'm looking to check for what's what's hype, what's not around or what is sitting on the wall so I can gauge what the, the value is. And I think all of those retailers really are going to find their way to kind of get into our world and balance the two together. I think it's hard to to keep up, you know, when the consumer really just wants the stuff that's limited. Um, but I mean, I think it's going to be interesting to see how everybody plays out because I do see. I don't think all of them will still be playing in the next couple of years. As a, just a retailer, period. As Not, just a retailer. And then what about Nike, Adidas? What do they do? Because they're obviously going more direct to consumer. Right. They're, um, they give retailers, for the most part, trash product. They, they, they hold the good stuff yeah. for themselves, capture all that margin for themselves. Yeah. So they're not relying on third-party retailers anymore. They have always kind of shied away against resellers because they didn't get that margin. Right. So they, you know, it's, it's like the dirty little secret everybody knows. Where do you think all these shoes are coming from? Right. Right? It's obviously coming from retailers. It's not coming from kids. Yeah. And so how do they play out? What would, if you ran Nike or Adidas, what would you do? I think I would just continue to get into the music business and find collaborations and different ways that are connecting to the community. Because I think more than ever in this like really heavy influencer world that we live in, um, I think people really want to support or be attached to a movement that they they can connect to. And I think that's what, you know, Adidas did with Kanye. Of course, he kind of went down his route and not everyone wants to connect with him. But, you know, Virgil being able to do what he's done from a grassroots like brand and really just put his impact on a collection, Jerry Lorenzo and Fear of God, um, all those different things I think is really the future of those brands. And I think I would just go out and look at who are those up and coming brands that can add that cool factor versus you know, doing the same thing and just changing up colors or something like that. Got it. And so I have two last questions. Yep. Um, what is an up and coming brand that people should look out for that you think they're going to be a resale value for in the future? Is there anything that's like emerging that's not Nike Adidas Supreme? Um, I could say I've seen that effect with Chinatown Market uh, as of recent because of their their uh, approach at releasing things um i would i wouldn't put it past andrew um in miami um andrew downtown mm -hmm. um they have that same skate uh element to them and um very simple branding but it can definitely take off um and i think those are like two that stand out for me that I, i've seen already some uh resale business being able to evolve from got it and then if you had a thousand dollars today what should someone go buy that you think will increase in value? That'd be a good business decision. Any off-white sneakers or... Uh, off-white Nike or off-white... Off, so off-white Nike, yeah, yeah, to be clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. off-white Nike um, or um, I would say Supreme t-shirts or uh, some Yeezys. Uh, all of those, once the season passes, or I'll even say Supreme bags, once the season passes, they all go up a solid 20 to 30 percent in value over a six month period which is crazy because you can't get that return in the stock market no yeah i mean it's that's the thing though it's like this business is so lucrative and it's so easy to to make a good return which i would say is strong in the stock market but as so much cash and trying to scale that because if you're going to get into the stock market right and you, you know this like it's hard, it's easier to move all that big money yeah. with that lower percentage but when you want to move big money in this game it's kind of scary yeah. to put that kind of trust on some guy that's in the streets all the time yeah. like, you know, <laughs> trying to come up on some shirts and then what about last question i know i said to this is the final question yeah. recession comes tomorrow right does this industry just crater right what do you think happens uh i mean i know i'm gonna liquidate get cash rich and just wait for everybody to start bringing in their shit for a cheap price and yeah then like pawn shop them, yeah like, <laughs> position ourselves to to get like hoard inventory because you know yeah. you're gonna get stuff cheap yeah that's what it, it's funny because uh i bring up 2008 all the time and wonder um how a flight club or a riff did it uh because they're really the only real big sneaker stores or resale business that had to go through the recession yeah and essentially 
you know, they just played their position, stayed on their cash, and then just got ready to buy inventory really cheap. And I think, um, you know, what will happen with this visit? I think everything just gets cheaper. All right, yeah. Great. Thank you.